Uh, I'm Barbara Foreman. I'm professor of education, the EPS professor of education at Florida State University, former director of Florida Center for Reading Research and current director of the Regional Educational Laboratory. I'm Linda Hayes. I have been the director of PK Young Developmental Research School at the University of Florida for the past six years and a faculty member there since 1987. My name is Warnique Lewis. I am an elementary school teacher at, here in Tallahassee, Florida. I've taught five years in kindergarten, three years in second grade, and four years in third grade. The guide represents three interrelated themes that our, uh, our panel felt was really important. The first is uh, it reviewed the literature after the National Reading Panel, but nicely it really reinforces the findings of the National Reading Panel in the areas of alphabetics, phonological awareness, um, fluency and comprehension, but it also introduced uh, oral language as the first recommendation and also emphasized the integration of reading and language, so the guide was quite fresh with that integration. And I think at the same time it really reinforces the, um, the continuity of those recommendations, that these are things that these recommendations come from a pretty solid research base that has really withstood the test of time, mm -hmm. that keeps reinforcing principles and practices that emerged in the late 90s and the early 2000s and continue until this day. And, I, to, and, until, and even up until this day, I can see the profound impact of um, implementing these recommendations in classrooms uh, with students and teachers and what it can do for literacy achievement. Um, one of the things that I noticed that we introduced in our guide that sometimes are lacking in school is that students really need that practice reading. If they don't practice, they won't be successful. And um, I think in our curriculums that we have now, and even the ones that we've had 10 years ago, they don't emphasize reading decodable words in isolation and out of isolation, practicing those um, sound spelling patterns, they don't do it. So if they don't do it, students will never be able to read for understanding. I think from our conversations and deliberations and the writing of this practice guide, we really thought about um, the, the needs of those beginning readers and how do we really make that more explicit and transparent for teachers about where do you begin when you're helping a child learn to read and then I also think of this as kind of these recommendations as pathways for thinking about how to unlock um, roadblocks that might be coming forward for an individual child trying to learn to read. So when you're trying to unlock the mystery around that and think about where an individual student might be struggling to learn to read, I think you can take a look at these recommendations and kind of use them as a guide for identifying where you might provide more explicit instruction or more focused instruction to really support that beginning reader. Yeah, I would say the guide has a nice table, I get the number of the table, but it's a developmental sequence of the recommendations. And you see that the first recommendation on academic language permeates all the kindergarten through third grade that the guide covers. And then you see that the recommendations two and three are a developmental continuum of learning letters and then sound spelling patterns. And recommendation four is integrated into recommendations two and three in that developmental sequence because it's using the text to support the learning of the, the letters and letter sounds combinations. So, it's not overwhelming if you are a particular grade level teacher because you know your students and you know where they are developmentally and which of the recommendations you'll be targeting. Um, it's not that you won't, you'll be looking at all those recommendations, but particular action steps will be more relevant to, to uh, your students. I think the guide, also the recommendations from the guide, I think helps you think about are you making good choices in terms of um, the curriculums you're using, how you're implementing the curriculums, what you're emphasizing from a curriculum, what you might be ignoring in a curriculum, how do you adapt the materials available to you to really meet the instructional needs of the students 
um, in your class because that's such a critical part of developing or providing the support that is needed for beginning readers. So one of the ways that I think about the recommendations in the guide is um, to help uh, teachers and school leaders really think about what am I looking for in curriculum products that will really support student learning.